Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're building this super cheap and super awesome DCC++ base station. Okay everyone, a few quick announcements. I am having my 500 subscriber contest and you do have to be subscribed to be eligible for that. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates, including ones on that contest. Also, I've been receiving a lot of great ideas and requests for videos and I want you guys to keep that up. So if you have an idea for a video, whether I know how to do it already or it's something new for me to try, leave that in the comments below and I will do my best to get to that. I've already got some great suggestions. Okay, so let's get right into this. This is a DCC++ base station. It is comprised of an Arduino Uno, an Arduino Motor Shield, a couple of jumper wires, and a 12 volt DC power supply. Here's the supplies you'll need for this tutorial. An Arduino Uno, an Arduino L298P motor shield, a DC power supply with an output of no more than 15 volts. This one is a 12 volt power supply. A small screwdriver set, 20 gauge wire, a utility knife, and some nippers. All right, let's get started here. This is a relatively simple build, and we're going to be building it right on top of the Arduino. Now the Arduino motor shield can power the Arduino. We're not going to power the Arduino with it, but it can through this VIN pin right here. And if you'll look on the other side of a motor shield, you'll see all these pins. These all correspond to pins in the Arduino. So this basically sits on top of it where it gets the name shield. So if we look on the other side of the motor shield, we have these two tiny little squares that say VIN connect. That is the other side where the VIN pin is. And right here in between, there's a little tiny sliver of metal that works as electrical conductivity. And what that does is it basically allows your motor shield to send power to the Arduino. Now we are actually going to take our utility knife and we're going to just make sure we're going to cut right in there and sever that little sliver of metal right there. And the reason that we're doing that is because the motor shield can handle 15 volts and the Arduino can only handle a maximum of 12 volts. So we're just cutting that just to make sure that the motor shield doesn't short out the Arduino. We are using a 12 volt power supply in this build, but better safe than sorry if you ever want to upgrade to a 15 volt power supply. All right, so now we're gonna start our actual build. We're gonna set the Arduino right here, and then we're gonna take the motor shield and sit it right on top. You'll see that all of the pins connect exactly as so. So first we're gonna take one of these jumpers and we're gonna connect it from pin five to pin 13. Then we're gonna take the second jumper and we're gonna connect it from pin 10 to pin 12. So that's the only real wiring with pins and modifications that you need to do to the actual Arduino and motor shield itself. Next, we're gonna talk about our DC power supply. The one that I'm supplying you a link to has this little adapter right here that allows you to screw in regular wires. And the reason that we do that is that the DC power input for the Arduino motor shield is a screw in terminal rather than a simple plug like the Arduino has. If you don't have this, you will need to cut the end off of your power supply like this one and then connect the wires. As you can see, there is a plus and a minus and we're going to hook our red wire into the positive. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen these. And 
Then we're gonna hook our white wire into the ground or negative. And then we're just gonna tighten those back down. So now we're gonna loosen up the screw terminal for our power connection. And then we're gonna connect our wires into the corresponding sockets. So white goes into ground, red goes into the VIN or the power. And then we're gonna tighten those back down. Now the rest of these screw terminals are gonna be what connects power to your track. The motor power for number one or A is going to be the power for the main line and B is going to be your program track. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to do for the build itself until we hook it up to some track. So let's head over to the computer and do some programming. Okay, so let's get into programming the DCC++ base station. Now, I cannot take credit for creating this program. As many of you know, this has been around for a few years, and frankly, the programming skills here are way above my level. Fortunately, we can download the software from this website, and I will link it in the description below. So we're gonna go ahead and download. And then we're gonna open our download. And then we're gonna take the software folder right here that comes out of our download, and we're gonna move it over into our libraries right here. Now, this is a Mac computer, so you'll just have to find your Arduino library. In a Mac, it is in Documents, Arduino, libraries so I'm not quite sure where it'll be on a PC but this is where it is on a Mac computer so now we're going to open up our Arduino programmer and if you go to file examples and go all the way to the bottom you'll see this DCC++ Uno so we're going to go ahead and click on that and this opens up and you can see it is a lot of stuff. There are several different programs. And it's a complex program and I have to give a personal thank you to the creator because I never would have been able to do this by myself or even come close to it. You have your configuration, you have current monitor, you have all sorts of different stuff. Let's take a look at the configuration. You can see we have our Arduino motor shield or another type of motor shield. And we can see why we have the pin connections. So our pin connections that where it's going to be transmitting out of are going to be pins 10 and 5. So the mainline pin comes out of pin 10 and the program pin comes out of pin 5. And then if we go down to our directional motor channel pin, it's going to have pin a, which is our main line, is pin 12, and then pin B, which is our program track, is pin 13. And you can see those coordinate program 5 to 13, then the main line pin 10 to main line pin 12. So that's why we have those little jumpers enabled. So what we're going to do really quick is we are going to verify the program.
And you can see that this program is a lot larger than most of our programs. This takes up over half of the memory on our Arduino. So we're gonna go ahead and load this into our Arduino and we're gonna test it out and see if it works. So I am running the DCC++ base station off of JMRI, which I have connected to my laptop right here. And if you haven't done a JMRI install before, it is a totally free program. And I've actually done a tutorial on how to set it up and it actually shows how to set up a DCC++ system in JMRI. And I will link that right here, as well as installing JMRI onto a computer. Okay, so we're gonna go into JMRI here really quick and you can see that I have the test locomotive put on here and it is address three. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the power on to the DCC++ base station. And you can see that all of these lights come on. This means that there is power coming to all four of these little slots right here. So these two lights represent the main line and these two lights represent the program track. So we do have power to our track. So let's go ahead and go to throttle. All right, we have our locomotive on there. So we're gonna give the locomotive a little bit of power now and see if it goes. And look at that. We're gonna put it into reverse. Now I can't obviously crank up to full speed because I have a very short amount of track, but we'll power it up a little bit more. We'll go forward again. And there you have it a super cheap DCC base station with the DCC++ system. I'm gonna link the original creator's YouTube channel in the description below. It's what I use to learn everything about DCC++. It's an amazing system, especially for the price. And it's a great way, if you don't have a lot of money, to get up and going on DCC. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I am having my 500 subscriber contest, so be sure to subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the like button and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. Next week, we have our series starting, What Can $5 Get You For Your Model Railroad? Until then, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.